Hi everybody, I forgot to wear a microphone because I was running late, so this is a voiceover, that's why my lips don't match, but the theme is Punk Royale, so come and get ready with me, like and subscribe, and uh, let's get into it. Okay, so tonight is the Sydney Dance Company's annual gala, it's called Dance Noir, and the theme is Punk Royale. Do you know what? I really love a theme. Especially Punk Royale. Actually, I think the reason I love the theme is because I've got a really good outfit. Romance was born for Amazing Australian Designers. I went in and had a look at some of their dresses. I've worn, when did I wear? I wore one um, at Eurovision and I wore one, oh, when I announced the points for Eurovision a few years ago, it was this gorgeous uh, Jenny Key Romance was born collaboration with flowers in my hair. Oh, it was gorgeous, gorgeous. So yeah, I'm very excited to be wearing this outfit. It's very punk, it's very royal, and I'm emceeing the night, and I'm super excited. I've set up all my cameras and lights. I'm in my drag room back in Sydney. Hopefully it looks great. Now I have to really anchor down my hair because I am wearing that giant rainbow hair that Vanity did me for Mardi Gras a few years back. Oh, it's just big. Basically, I just wanna anchor this really solidly to my hair. I'm gonna pin my ballet bun really solidly into that and then pin the amazing rainbow hair that Vanity did really solidly into that. Thankfully, I've got longer hair at the back, so it's good for gripping. Remember the day of like blending your foundation line into your jaw? Well, I like to blend my foundation line into my belly button. No, I like to just blend it like all the way down so that everything here is, everything exposed is one color. So I've um, done my eyebrows, I've done my contouring, I've powdered, and I'm ready to start painting on my mug for this punk royale. So the, the outfit is white and uh, neon rainbow with graffiti on it. And I think I'm going to do a really, like a big intense black smoky eye, but like with rainbow around it. So I want my brow to be a little heightened. I was thinking like rainbow brows, glitter brows, but I think the outfit and the hair is so much. I think I just want to do like a big, fabulous black smoky eye. Now I'm just laying down some primer because I'm going to be using a lot of colored eyeshadows. I'm going to use this Beauty Bay palette in bright. It's just got all you could want and more. So apparently everyone will be very dressed up tonight, which I'm excited about. It's a gala, but it's not a boring one. It's a fun one. The creative director of Sydney Dance Company, Raphael Bonicella, is there. We had a little tech rehearsal yesterday. He's an amazing man, so talented. I've seen so many amazing Sydney Dance Company shows over the years. And you've definitely seen his work too, because he choreographed um, Kylie's can't get you out of my head iconic choreography and worked with Kylie a lot over the years. He's a very talented man and choreographer. So I'm excited tonight to see little snippets of some of the Sydney Dance Company shows. There's a little bit of Memento, one of their shows that they did, which I saw and was glorious. So word is out. I am going to be doing my first ever panto in the UK this Christmas. It's a really big tradition in the UK. If you've seen Drag Race UK, I think they've talked about the tradition of panto. Pantomime, it's short for pantomime. It's a camp musical, usually based on a fairy tale that happens around Christmas time. I don't know if it has to happen at Christmas time, but um, I'm doing Pinocchio. I'm playing the blue fairy. And I found out that there was a Pinocchio movie, like a live action movie, and I haven't seen it. And Cynthia Erivo plays the blue fairy. So I cannot wait to watch that. And I adore her. I got to see her sing twice in one day. Actually, I didn't tell you in the last one. I mentioned the Stonewall Monument opening event and that Elton John was there, and I did mention Cynthia Erivo. She sang Home from The Wiz, which is beautiful. And then later on at the Stonewall Day concert, she sang, oh, it was like a whole disco set. There was some Whitney, I think there was some Shaka Khan. There was some Sinead O'Connor, which was surprising. Also on that day, President Biden spoke. Yes, he was a little weekend at Bernie's, but at that time he was still the presumptive nominee. And so it was a little concerning that he was a little bit weekend at Bernie's. But actually, he kind of won me over that day. He was he was sort of reading his teleprompter, but then he broke into like a, a story that wasn't on the prompter. And it was so warm 
and so gorgeous. He told this story about how he remembers when he went off to college, he was about 16 and his dad was driving, they got out of the car and he was saying goodbye and he looked and he saw two men kissing. And he looked at his dad and was like, because he said I just, he'd just never seen that before. He didn't know that that was possible. And he said to his dad, dad, what, what, are, what, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? And his dad turned to him and said, it's simple, son. They love each other. And it was such a gorgeous moment that just like really told me about the foundation of President Biden's relationship to LGBTQ plus people. Like if that first contact with his straight father was it simple, they love each other. It's just so beautiful and it is that simple. It's just two people loving each other. Yeah, it was a very sweet moment. And I was sitting in the fourth row and I had been messaging Willem in Alaska, talking about what I should wear because I knew that the president would be there. And I was gonna wear smaller hair because it was a really hot day in New York. And they were like, no, you have to wear the big hair. And I was like, okay. I didn't know I was in the fourth row at the time of choosing the hair, but I'm glad that I listened to them and wore the big hair because there's a photo from behind. Um, and you can just see my big head and President Biden there. And actually, um, Neil Patrick Harris and David Berker were there as well and they took a photo and they messaged it to Willem and said is this Lady Bunny because my hair was so big they thought that I was Lady Bunny from behind and I'm like you think Lady Bunny is sitting fourth row while President Biden speaking so yeah that was camp actually I saw Bunny when I was in Amsterdam we had a little a little coffee a little lunch which is delightful she was performing there I didn't Oh. oh God, the microphone fell off. My pencil sharpener just emptied all out onto the ground when I mentioned Bunny's name. Um, yes, Bunny was performing in Amsterdam when I was there. I didn't get to see her show, but we did have a lovely little lunch and a little catch up, which was delightful to see her. Did I finish my story? Cynthia Erivo, Blue Fairy Pinocchio. Oh yeah. So I'm doing a pantomime, which I have always wanted to do, but now when I'm like, oh God, Bradford, which Look, Bradford, I'm looking forward to meeting you, but it's in the north of England. It's sort of like in between Leeds and Manchester and Liverpool. But it's just gonna be so cold. I hate the cold. I have a, I don't believe in anything. I'm a godless atheist who doesn't believe in anything. But if I did believe in something, I'd believe that in a past life, I was little match girl. Got my last match. I was on Old Compton Street in Soho in London. I lit my last match. Oh, desperate to keep warm as it burnt all the way down to my fingertips. And then when it did, I just laid back and froze to death on the footsteps of Balance on Old Compton Street. So yeah, I kind of have this like phobia of the cold because I grew up in Queensland where it's always warm. I've never had to learn how to be warm. When I lived in London for those few years, I got better at it. I will say that once you learn like you need thermals and you need a big jacket and the jackets in the UK are different to the jackets in Australia when it comes to like their warmth. I'm living like a short walk from the theater. And I was like, oh great, that'll be lovely to walk to the theater each day. And I was like, not in the snow. But I'm excited about being in a panto. It's 11 shows a week. Normally in musical theater, people will do like eight shows a week. So it's 11 shows a week, which is a lot. It goes for six weeks. I'm excited to learn about my costume and what songs I'm singing. I have two weeks of rehearsals and then it opens on the 7th of December and it runs through to the 19th of January. You can get your tickets at bradford-theatres.co.uk or whatever it says here on the screen. If you're in Bradford, if you're in Leeds, if you're in Liverpool, if you're in Manchester, if you're anywhere up there in Yorkshire or West Northern England, um, I know the twins are coming from Cardiff, so if they're coming from Cardiff, you can come from Manchester. Oh. So pantos happen like all around the UK and all of the cities. The company who's the promoter and the producer, Crossroads, they do like all of the big pantos. I went and saw um, Julian Clary and Dawn French at the Palladium in London in 2019. That was the first time I've ever seen a UK panto. It was so gay. <laughs> and it was so much fun. And there really is like a lot in there for the children, but a lot in there for the parents as well, because the audience consists mostly of children. Um, and you know, amidst all of this moral panic about drag queens and children, the UK has got a very long history with drag as a performance art in pantomime. The lead 
the, the dame, like the, the, the wicked stepmother or the wicked queen or whatever, was always played by a man in drag in the pantomime traditionally. And I believe also that like the, the leading man, like the prince, was played by a woman in drag, I think. Now, whilst it will be the first time I've been in a UK panto, I actually grew up doing pantomimes, not quite the same, but in Brisbane, at the same talent agency and theatre company, every school holidays, we would do a pantomime. So like from the age of, I don't know, about seven, my first pantomime was Cinderella and I played a mouse. I wore this like grey lycra cat suit, it was so cute. And Mr. Kennett, the director of fame, he had like been over to New York and he'd bought back all of this beautiful, expensive, glamorous fabric that got turned into the, the costumes. Because back in the 80s? Oh my God, it was, it would have been the 80s. Back in the 80s, oh my God, the late 80s, late 80s. Yeah, the late 80s, you, you couldn't get like great fabric and stuff like that in Brisbane. You couldn't order it online because the internet wasn't going to be invented for another 15 years. Well, maybe it had been invented, but it wasn't common use. It was only used by the army. Anyway, so Kristen Bolton played the fairy godmother. I remember I had a crush on her and I remember like having like a real film camera and like being like, can I get a photo with you? And taking photos with like Jodie and Kristen and all of the, the girls in the gorgeous gowns and being like, ah, and having like a crush on these women. They were very glamorous and beautiful. But the star of the show was the stepmother, Gertrude Guzzle Gutzer, or Mrs. Gigi for short, was her name. And she was played by Brian Emerson, who was the musical director of fame, who's a marvelous, marvelous man and a brilliant entertainer, so talented. And oh, I just remember just everybody loved Gertrude Guzzle Gutzer. And the costumes were amazing. Kate Seib and Leonie Murphy played the other two stepsisters. And I just remember we all were just like beguiled by Brian as Mrs. Gigi. I remember being so sort of fascinated that like I had no fine art skills. I still don't have any fine art skills. I can do makeup on myself and that's about it. But I remember like going home and getting like coloring pencils and paper. I didn't even, I didn't know what a face chart was for makeup back then, but I decided to do some face charts. I just invented face charts as a child and sort of did like makeup designs that were in the colors of Mrs. Gigi's costumes. And I took them into fame and like gave them to Brian as like unsolicited suggestions of makeup. At age seven, isn't that wild? I'd kind of forgotten about that until recently. I was like, oh my God, look at me doing, literally doing drag makeup designs at age seven. And yeah, so I guess that was my first brush with drag and it was in a pantomime. And so now I'm gonna be in a pantomime again. Actually the outfit that I'm wearing today <clears throat> doesn't resemble anything that Mrs. Gertrude Guzzle Guts a wore to the ball, but it was sort of like a Marie Antoinette, like a big white wig. I don't know if there was a boat in it or something, and like a big powdered wig with a white powdered face that was in Act Two. That would come back in Act the beginning of Act Two, and they would be at the ball, like with the little like Cupid bow lip and like big makeup and this fabulous garish pink and green gown. Pink and green should never be seen unless there's a drag queen in between. Raw. Um, yeah, fun times, fun times. I've talked about Mr. Kennett before, who was a director of fame, a marvelous man who really, I would say, gave me a love of, well, I love performing already, but Mr. Kennett just fostered that in all of us and created the most wonderful atmosphere at fame. It was just such a glorious time. I was there from like seven years old through till about like 16 and it was such a fun environment and he was just wonderful. He was this sort of older little round man with a high pitched squeal and he loved the shows. He was very passionate. He was very harsh with his notes. He would take things very seriously, but then he would also have a lot of fun. And his motto was always about being, um, that the shows were for the young and the young at heart. And he was definitely young of heart. And earlier this year, he sadly passed away. But yeah, he just, wow. Often the other kids from Fame will like get together and be like, God, we, we were so lucky to have found Fame and to have found each other and have such strong friendships. And it was just such a fun place. And it was just that place that I could go to as a kid when school wasn't that welcoming, that was completely welcoming, where you could be yourself completely and just 
be celebrated and be embraced and be encouraged. I had a wonderful beginning in pantomimes. Hopefully this won't be my end in pantomimes, but I am looking forward to um, Pinocchio in Bradford this Christmas. So get your tickets if you're in the Northern England area. Get the train. It's like 40 minutes from Manchester. It's cold and it's come to come to Bradford, have a delicious curry and come and see Pinocchio with little old Courtney Anxious the Blue Fairy. Not just some chapstick and mascara today, is it boys? Who said chapstick and mascara? Ben de la creme. Look at me now, Ben de la creme. No kissing anyone tonight. It'll be very obvious if I do. You can do all the the major works with the finger and then come back and do the fine detail. Oh, this is taking me back to when I did Rocky Horror with Bianca in um, San Antonio, Texas. I played um, Frank, Frankenfurter. And, and Bianca played uh, Magenta. And Michelle played Riff Raff. Some gender blind casting. Oh, I just saw a clip of that on YouTube. Like someone had done like a YouTube short of Bianca and I together during that time. It was so much fun. But we're in San Antonio, Texas. A door was meant to play Frank, but then she had something was happened with her teeth. She had to get some tooth something done, and so she couldn't. And I was so glad. <laughs> and they called me and asked me to play Frank. Oh, so good. And in just seven days, oh, oh. people don't think of me as a Frank converter because the chapstick and mascara. But I can do it. I've got it in me. I think I was probably a very feminine Frank. But so this is my. I call it my ballet bun. And I put this on and then glue it down, anchor it on really, really well. And then I put the giant hair onto this and pin it all in. My hair is a bit long at the moment. I need to get a haircut. In the last Get Ready With Me, I said, not that I ever had any a few times, which I looked for the original. It was Andy McDowell on like a L'Oreal hair color ad. And she was talking about gray hairs. And she was like, and it even covers up gray hairs. Not that I ever had any. Um, I just thought of that because I saw a grey hair. But I scoured the internet and I couldn't find it. If anybody else, if anybody out there happens to uh, have seen that Andy McDowell commercial, comment down below and let me know. Or do you remember it? Did you have it in your country? Was it Australian? I assume it was on in America. I assume she did hair colour ads in the United States as well. All right, now it is time to put the gown on. I was running late, so I didn't have a microphone, but this is the gorgeous gown from Romance Was Born. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, that's my necklace. I can't say that on television. Gorgeous Fendi baguette handbag. Rhymes with the uh, what it said on the necklace that I just put on, baguette. And here is the hair, the piece de resistance that Wigs by Vanity did for me at Mardi Gras a few years ago. Oh which earrings gold or black willem told me to mix metals so i'm really layering in the gold and the silver here but i think this looks bloody marvelous oh and a glove a nice opera length pleather glove that's from wing weft gloves actually ah oh, isn't she gorgeous look at this rainbow of hair and this outfit and this dark eye giving a Pirate Punk Royale. Gorgeous, a little bit of Vivian Westwood around the neck there, cause you know, Viv needs to come too. All right, now I'm running late, so I've got to go.